Does he have to look a certain way? Um, as far as race, I prefer a black man. Black man. Black man. Yeah, we back. We back. Now, this morning, man, I was watching a video from O'Shea Duke Jackson. Shout out to O'Shea. A brilliant video. A brilliant video. And I want to dissect it. Now, this video is going to be a reaction of a reaction. So, O'Shea was reacting to a video put out by Kendra G. As you already know, Kendra G, uh, dating show Kendra G. People come on her show every night. And this uh, racially ambiguous woman, you know, this uh, this lady from Puerto Rico, a Puerto Rican woman, came up, on, came up on the show, said she was looking for a black man. And I want to tie this video back to something I had mentioned in some videos from last week. Uh, I think we could really talk about it. We could talk about the reputation of black men, the image that black men put out to the world. Uh, O'Shea's analysis was brilliant, and I'm going to tie it back to my videos as well. So anyways, I'm going to jump into it, and I'll be right back with the commentary. I'm going to come in and out. Yes. You, what's your zodiac sign? I'm a Scorpio. Scorpio, you have any children? I do. I have a 16-year-old and a 9-year-old. Okay, both by the same man? No, different no, fathers. So that's Kimberly. Never been married has two kids by two different men. And if you wanted to get more personal, she just lost 76 pounds. So she was a lot bigger. Nothing wrong with any of that. I mean, that's just up to her. But the next part is going to shock you. Kendra G asks her about her turnoffs and what she's looking for in a man or what she isn't looking for in a man. I want you to hear what she has to say. Does he have to look a certain way? Um, As far as race, I prefer a black man. Are you biracial? I'm Puerto Rican. Oh, you're Puerto Rican. Okay. So, okay. So, you would you date? Do you date Puerto Rican men? No. No, black men only. Yes. Ooh, child. <laughs> Papi gonna be like, okay. Um, <laughs> Puerto Ricans are way too controlling. <laughs> uh uh. Mm -mm. No. Nope. No Puerto Rican men. No. How does daddy feel about that? My whole family, most of my, my sisters are with black men as well. Now stop the show. This is very interesting. She said, I'm not interested in Puerto Rican men. I'm interested in black men only. Well, why? Well, it's not because black men look better or black men are better people or black men are more intelligent or black men build great businesses or black men are just great providers. No, she didn't mention any of that. What did she say? Puerto Rican men are just too controlling. She's 37. She has kids by multiple men and she doesn't want to get with the Puerto Rican guy because with the Puerto Rican man, there's going to be more structure in the relationship. And All right, we back. Now, last week I put out a video. It went crazy. It got like 200,000 views. It was the Dr. Umar Johnson, uh, my reaction to his interview with Joe Budden, part one to the interview with Joe Budden. But I remember many of the comments that I got on part one of my reaction, uh, so many comments, hundreds of comments, basically saying that it's not black men's position to speak our mind towards our women. That's basically what I, what I, I got a lot of comments saying that. For example, take a look up on the screen. This person said, men address men, women address women. And obviously at the bottom, I was like, women check women, you're nothing but cat. You, you're nothing but cat. This person said, it's not the man's job to correct the error of a woman iron sharpens iron and at the bottom i said women are not correcting each other so if men are not doing it then who will this person said dr umar's job is to speak to and about the black man not the black woman the man checks the man and the woman checks the woman and of course i was like cat this person said he addresses men because men are supposed to check men and women check women what you are doing is deflection for unnecessary tension and of course i said cat now when you look at this mindset that is very prevalent among our people, at least in the West, when you examine the mainstream image of the black man, the mainstream reputation of the black man, I've always said that the black man in the West, especially, is the most egalitarian group of men walking the planet Earth, man. Especially when you compare it to other groups of men, Arab men, uh, Hispanic men, Chinese men, etc., etc. At least when you talk about the West, black women are known to have way more independence and autonomy than other groups of women. And other women pick up on that. They notice that. And some women want a taste of that because in their own cultures, their men don't give them the same freedom and autonomy and range to do and say whatever they want to do compared to how we do with black women. 
You know, even in my reaction to Dr. Umar Johnson, a bunch of black men came into the comment section told me, nigga, shut your mouth, nigga, you can't talk to the women like that. You know what I'm saying? In other cultures, it don't go like that. It don't go like that, nigga. They come together like, nigga, we holding the women accountable. It's way different amongst black men in the West anyway. In the West, obviously, if you go to, you know, Senegal, you know, the Muslim women over in Senegal is obviously going to be different. If you go to, you know, different locations, whatever. But in the West, we're talking about in the West, obviously. And, you know, in the melting pot that is the West. Black men are known to grant women more freedom and autonomy and range than other groups of men. Other groups of men run more of a tight ship compared to black men because other black men will come against you if you as a black man try to provide some structure or critique or analysis to a situation, right? They're going to tell you, nigga, shut your mouth, nigga. You can't talk to women like that. So that's how I go. That's how I go. And other women, I agree. They want a piece of that too, man. They want they want to enjoy some of that freedom as well, man. Of course, obviously, you got the hip hop culture that plays a role in that because, you know, black men are known to be, you know, the most the most talented, the most athletic, the most, you know, we, we, we make all the fire music, shit like that. So that also adds a... Uh, an alluring factor as to why some women want to get involved with black men but i also believe that that also plays a role the fact that black men grant more freedom to women than other groups of men and you can say some might tie that back to history some people may try to connect that to ancient cultures and civilizations where black women held positions of authority way before other groups of women when you look at other groups of women especially the white women she just now in the past century just started enjoying freedom but when it comes to the black woman you can go back thousands of years and you can examine certain civilizations where they've held titles such as queen or they've been the regent or they've been members of the council or political advisors to the king so black women had more freedom way before other groups of women so that may also play a role into why black men may feel the way they feel but regardless of that fact that's the reputation that black men have and some people may also tie that back to our veneration of our mothers when you examine you know several black cultures around the world especially african cultures there's a heavy veneration on the mother we love our mothers man keep it a stack man we, we love our mamas man i don't care where you from i don't care what where the black man from i don't care what culture he from he love his mama he love his mama you know what i'm saying we love our mama so i think that also plays a role in that our mothers traditionally have always held positions of authority in our cultures and civilizations for example the mother to the king was always a very important person in our ancient civilizations that's a fact that's a fact you had the king and then you had the king's mother you know she was very important she was very respected for example, I forget the name of the king, but there was one that I had read about that after he would defeat his enemies in battle, he would bring back the skulls of the defeated chiefs back to his mother. You know, she would collect the skulls of the defeated enemies. So, you know, we always had a high veneration for our mothers, and that may also be a contributing factor as to why we may operate the way we do. Now, keep in mind, all of this pertains to the West. Obviously, like I said, the black woman in northern Nigeria, obviously, is going to be a different story. The black woman in Senegal, the black woman in Mali, is going to be a different story we're talking about the black men in the west in particular right that are living under these you know these cultural parameters and as it pertains to o'shea's analysis yeah you know i'm not interested in dealing with no woman who thinks that when she comes deal with when she comes dealing with me that now is going to be oh shit now i got the freedom and the power to do whatever the fuck i want to do because the black man he not gonna hold me accountable you see the men of my culture they gonna hold me accountable but i see how the black man operates with the black woman he don't be holding her accountable so now i can do whatever the fuck i want to do if she come around me thinking that it's gonna be a whole different story now overall when you account for the damn near 600 million black men across the world Overall, I think the majority of black men are conservative and traditional in their mentalities when it comes to how they operate with women. But that is not our mainstream reputation. That image is not disseminated across the world. The image that is displayed across the world is the charismatic, athletic, you know, fly dressing motherfucker, handsome motherfucker, but he doesn't hold women accountable. That's the image of the black man, at least in mainstream society. Meanwhile, when you examine the reputation of other cultures, other groups of men, for example, they're known for, you know, keeping their foot on the necks of their women. And I'm not even saying that black men should emulate that behavior because I'm not saying that. I don't believe in that. But I'm saying that other women, when they look at black men, they assume that it's going to be a more liberal situation. I'm going to have more freedom and autonomy because when they look at the black woman, they see, oh, the black woman is known for being free and autonomous and independent and saying and doing whatever the, whatever the fuck she want to do, at least in the West. Obviously, like I said, it's different in different locations. But in the West, that is the image that is portrayed to the masses of the people. And like I mentioned before, everyone is a product of their environment. So even in the video, O'Shea had mentioned something about the passport bros. So when you see these dudes going to different countries because they wanna they wanna get with these different women because they say these women have a different temperament or a different attitude. Well, those women are socialized by their environment and their culture because those men have set a structure in place to where only certain behavior is gonna be accepted and other behaviors are not gonna be accepted. So women naturally adjust to that environment. Women adjust to the environment that men set. That's why I never agreed when people got into my comment section saying that, oh, the men address men 
and women address women, women men don't speak to women i never believed in that because it's the men that set the cultural parameters that the women and children follow that's a fact that's a fact and i'm gonna play that clip where o'shea was talking about the dynamics of the whole passport bro scenario run the footage i'll be right back that's why you have passport bros. Passport bros want to go and typically benefit from this culture that these men have put before their women. But what she's saying is a black man is typically gonna allow me to do whatever I want to do. And All right, we back. Now, in summary, this has more to do with the mainstream image of the black man. Uh, because like I said, for the most part, I think most black men are traditional or conservative in their mentalities. Uh, when you go to northern Nigeria, the black men over there is not letting the women run nothing. So obviously, it's different for different locations. This conversation is mainly about black men who are born and raised in the West, regardless of your cultural background. Because even if you're a black man from a foreign culture in the West, you are going to be influenced by the West. You're not going to be as traditional or conservative as your fathers and grandfathers who came from different locations. You're going to be more egalitarian just by virtue of being born and raised in the West. That's a black man. That's the reality. But, uh, you know, I think O'Shea was on point. I think it was on point And it tied back to a lot of comments that I got in my comment section. A lot of dudes really believe that men don't have the liberty to speak when it comes to women. Like, that was crazy to me. When I was looking at my comment section, I couldn't believe so many people were saying that. The men were saying that. The women were saying that. Said, listen, it's not a man's job to speak on a woman. Like, what? Nigga, I'm not, listen, I, I was raised different, bro. I was raised different. But anyways, man, it's your boy Never Card that's Celine back in the Billy Yes indeed. Cash app up on the screen and I'm gone. Peace. Reincarnated, I'm back in the original fashion. I left on a horse and came back in that ass. And I left with abundance and came back to famine. We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping. Look how the mighty have fallen. Used to be running, sh now we be walking. When you be cooning, that's when they applauded. Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter. Gotta come up in this shit. They stuck in the mix. Really, my heart would be breaking. That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business. Pass it down in generation. Talking about money and power and building a nation. That's a deadly combination. Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genders. Falsifying information. No, they got malice intentions. Step in the room and I'm feeling the tension. Enemy watching me, blocking my vision. Pay for the check, cause I need my redemption. Building my kingdom, I need to protect it. Ready for war like a young money Congo. Never decided the team is the motto. Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles. Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato. I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain and make it ambition. I'm blessed by the gods, but I ain't religious. I came for the power, they came for the bitch. They making no hourly wage. I got business. This shit is an art, and it can never be taught. Selling my soul, I can never be bought. Play all my money, I see you in court. Run to the check and I do it for sport Babylon falling, I go to the source Packing my luggage and go overseas Shorty be with me and she so at least Shorty be chugged and I'm calling her Hershey Secret intelligence probably gon' murk me Don't fuck with brands cause nigga I'm Haitian Say the wrong shit and you're smacking their faces